Now, you guys know we just finished the Transform series this past Wednesday. Uh, Ten services on Transform. If you missed any one of those, please go on to our YouTube page. You can find every one of them there from Transform 1 all the way up to 10. And really tune in and listen to those messages because they are encouraging. And it will strengthen your faith uh, and, and give you some insight onto how we are to walk. So now uh, we're going to start a new series today. And this series may go on for another 10 more services, all right? We just don't know. But uh, we're not going to veer away from the revelation that we got about spirit, soul, and body. We're not going to veer away from that. As a matter of fact, every message that's going to be spoken about from here on out is going to include our spirit, soul, and body because that is what's going to give us an insight onto how things need to change. All right? Come on, somebody. Amen. Because we got, we, got, we got so many, we got so many uh, people that feel or think that they can't change certain things about them or they would like to, but they don't know how. But through this, what we're about to start here, it's going to help us out tremendously. All right, so today I'm just going to start it off. We're going to lay down a foundation, and we're going to get a little bit of understanding. All right, the title of this message is called The Root. Praise God, The Root. In Spanish, La Raiz. Oh, I said, not the rice. The rice? No, no. The Root, La Raiz, The Root. And, and how many of you guys know and understand that a lot of things that happen in our lives, uh, whether they're good or bad, have a root to them. They have a root on the inside of us. And, uh, and it's just like a, like, a, like, it's like a tree. You know, and so many times, I, the Bible, God refers to us and compares us to trees, that we are branches, that we are to bear fruit, that we are to be rooted in love. Come on, somebody. So he always brings this comparison to us being rooted, all right, and us having a root. Um, and so, you know, in life, again, when you see people doing certain things in life, maybe they may be mean, they may be angry, they, they, they may show out in certain ways. They, and, and well, just know that when you see that, that is just the fruit of the root. That's the fruit. That means it's already been developed, and that's the fruit that they have, they have, bear, that they have bore, is their fruit. And so we got to, in, in turn, be aware of what kind of fruit we eat from or what tree we eat from, right? Because for the most part, guys, um, and I don't know if this is true or not. I just heard this somewhere along the line somewhere. I heard that a tree, that the part that we see of the tree and the leaves and the fruit, that the root is just as deep. I don't know if that's true or not. If anybody in here can maybe confirm that or you may know, but I mean, just imagine that's, if that tree, I got some huge trees in my front yard. I got two big old huge trees. And I'm thinking, whoa, if the root of that thing goes that deep, that's some deep, deep stuff. Come on. Amen. So God compares us to that. So we, in turn, are, are going to want to learn what the root cause is of the fruit. And this is not only going to help us identify with some of the things going on in our lives, but it's also going to help us identify when somebody else has that kind of fruit. Because I think for too long, we, we tend to kind of like look at things and it's like, well, man, they're just mean people. I just don't like being around them. But that's just the fruit that we're looking at. In reality, there's a root cause to that thing. And watch this. When you have this understanding, like we're going to get this revelation here through this series, when you have that understanding, now you will be able to talk to them, whether it's a family member, a co-worker, a community, whoever it may be. You will now, you, you will indicate the fruit, and you'll say, man, there's a root. And now you can conversate with them according to the root and help them out. Because sometimes people do, does not understand that how deep those roots go inside of their lives, and they are actually producing a tree-like, uh, uh, tree-like, uh, uh, say, uh, results, and giving out that fruit. Amen. Y'all guys with me this morning? 
Now, let's, we're going to start off, this is going to be the text to this uh, series, uh, and it's Matthew 15, 13. And this is Jesus uh, answering back to a group of people that were asking him a question. Now, you can go back in Matthew 15 and, and, and look up the question here. But Jesus says something very interesting in this scripture. It says this, and the Lord, oh, oh go back, uh, John 15, or oh, Matthew 15. It says, but he answered and said, this is Jesus, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be uprooted, shall be rooted up. One of the things this scripture is telling me is that there are roots involved. Another thing that this is telling me is that somebody or something planted something on the inside of you that wasn't God. Now, for the most part, because we had a long relationship with the flesh, he allowed certain things to come in and planted some things that begin to start tarnishing our soul, which is our mind, will, and emotions. Okay, you with me here? So here, God is saying, those things which I did not plant, I will root up. Ooh, praise God. He's going to take out from the root. Now, um, I, have a, I have a front yard that's got, it's green because it's got grass on it, and then it's greener because it's got weeds in it too. All right. You guys know. All right. So one of the things somebody told me when they were like, Pastor, if you would just pull up those weeds, if you would get rid of all those weeds, that grass would grow right there. In other words, grass, those weeds are choking the grass. Come on. How many of y'all would rather have grass than weeds? Right. Come on, somebody. But what's this? So then he was like, yeah, man, you got to pull those. And, you know, you got to pull those weeds out from the roots, because if you don't, they're just going to stay there and regrow. Right. And every now and then, I'd go out there, and I, you know, I put some gloves on. I, I start being like a gardener, you know. I get out there and start pulling up those weeds. But watch this: some of the weeds I was able to pull up from the roots, but other weeds they would just like snap off. You know what I'm talking about? And so I couldn't like get to them. So what what did I really need to do? I needed to find something or get to the point where I was able to get into the dirt. Come on. Dig deep into the dirt, Sister Aurora, and pull it up from the root. The whole thing, boom! And then that would kill those weeds. I'm here to tell you something, guys. Watch this. God is about to stick his hands all up in your dirt and uproot and root up every single thing that he did not plant. Because right now, it may look green, but it's because there's weeds there. But there needs to be grass. Come on, somebody. And that's what he wants for us, so that you can have a grassy night. So it'll go back to the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, it was a beautiful place. It was a beautiful land. And to be honest with you, that's exactly where the Lord wants to get us back to. He wants us to get back to the Garden of Eden, where we're able to talk to God, where there's no sin, where there's just a, we're freedom to roam around and even naked. Praise the Lord. All right. So anyhow, so there it is. All right. So again, here it is. My heavenly father has not planted those things, and he's going to root them up. Come on, somebody. Now watch this. Here's the next question. So, uh, you know, and, and, and sometimes, guys, people, people don't realize this. They, they really don't realize that there are some things that got planted on the inside of them, and they're, they're, maybe they're acting a certain way. And most of the time when you ask them, why are you acting like that? They'll be like, I don't know. But, see, we're going to discover, I know why, because there's a root on the inside of you. Whether it's anger, bitterness, whether it's, it's resentment, it's hurt. You know, something happened to you when you were five years old and, and you never took care of it. So guess what happened? Now you're 40. So that thing is 35 years old and it has grown up into a tree and now it's giving up that kind of fruit. Right. So what's this? Like, like, for instance, if you have an apple tree, well, that apple tree at the beginning was an apple seed and it got planted into the ground. Right. And that that tree doesn't have no say so what kind of fruit is going to produce. 
He's going to produce apples because it's an apple seed. He ain't no choice. Bloop, 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 bloop. He starts producing apples. And now we can pluck that apple, hi, or we can pluck it and eat it. Amen. How many of y'all like apples? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. So we need some apples in our lives. So here's the idea is that um, a seed, watch this, a seed needs to be put. What does it need for it to germinate? What does a seed need besides sunlight and water? What does the seed initially need for it to germinate? It needs to go into the what? To the dirt. Hector, you're right. He's like, I know this one. I got it. <laughs> a seed needs dirt. All right. Let's go into Genesis 2-7. Let me get you a little history on this thing so that we can understand this. Because in order for us to understand this, we're going to have to understand this, what I'm about to pull up. Watch this. Genesis 2-7. This is where God created us in his image, and he made us. All right? So watch this. And the Lord God formed us. So say, that's me. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath or the spirit of life. And man became a living soul. The, there you got your uh, spirit, soul, and body right there. The dust of the ground, the flesh. Breathe into his nostrils the breath of the spirit of life, and the man became a living soul. Boom, right there. All right? So notice right here. God formed man of what? What are we? Dust. We are dirt. Come on, somebody. We are ground. Are y'all with me? So let's put it out of the message translation. See how this one says it. And we're going to start right here where it says God in big words. It says, God formed man out of dirt. From the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man came alive, a living soul. So understand this, guys. You are dirt. God formed you out of dirt. That's what your body's made of dirt. So, guess what? You are ground. Y'all with me? Okay, watch this. That's where all the dirty stuff comes from. I'm not trying to be perverted, I'm just saying. It's because the flesh is made out of dirt. That's where all that gossip comes from. You know, you know people say, hey, man, you want to hear the dirt about? Yeah, that's the dirt. All that perversion, right there. It's dirty. It's nasty. Right? Watch this. But dirt, when you sow the seed, it has to make a hole in the ground. So that that seed could be put in there. Are you with me? Right? A seed needs to have a hole in the ground so that the seed can come into the ground. Well, guess what? God put holes in us so that seed could be planted. Where's that? Your eyes, your ears, your mouth, and your nose. And there's other holes, but we're not going to talk about that. But what I'm saying is primarily... Seed is planted right here in this area of your existence. So here's what I tell you guys this morning. This is just a foundational. Before you had Jesus, the only seeds that you were getting planted into were, were seeds of flesh. Again, some of us may have received seeds in us because we didn't know how to not receive them. And we, we, things that we see, things that we hear, that's why you got to be careful. Listen, guys, listen to me closely what I tell you next. That's why you got to be aware of what kind of seed you listen to. Because it gets planted on the inside of you. And then next thing you know, if it's a seed of doubt, if it's a seed of division, if it's a seed of hatred, if it's a seed of no God, if it's a seed of, of rejection, if it's just, okay, you receive that, boom, next thing you know, it's growing on the inside of you. And it's producing that kind of fruit. Right? How about things that you watch? 
this is a hole, guys. This is a sea. See, we see through our eyes, but we see with our mind. So when we begin to start seeing, it's a sea that's going in through these eyes into the mind, will, and emotions, and it begins to start moving things that we probably don't need to be doing. That's why uh, we got to be careful that we don't watch too many novelas. You know, you want to watch some novelas all day long, and then when your husband gets home, where you been? Who you been with? Where were you gone so long? You were supposed to be here 30 minutes ago. Where were you? What were we doing? Well, it's because you've been watching the seed of that television telling you something has been planted into your eyes, and now it's all up in your heart. And now you think your husband is out doing all kinds of stuff or your wife is doing all kinds of weird things. But let me tell you something, guys. There are things and people who will plant seeds into you. And you got to learn how to not receive that. I don't receive that report. Hey, you're sick in your body? Pfft, I don't receive that. No, 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 that's, that's a bad seed. You know what? You're fat. Hey, I don't receive that. There is God. I don't receive that. Hey, you're ugly. Pfft, I don't receive that, man. I'm made in the image of God. And God's beautiful. Come on, somebody. Watch. Let's see if we can do this. So in Genesis 2.15, here God's talking about Adam, CV translation. He says, the Lord God put the man in the Garden of Eden to take care of it and to look after it. So what was Adam's job? To take care of the earth and to look after it. Well, aren't we the earth too, the dirt? So our job is to take care of this body and to look after it. And to not allow certain things to come into our lives and, and mess up our soul. Y'all with me? So here's what David said in the book of Psalms 52.5. That is going to happen to that that he roots up. Watch this. But the Almighty will strike you down forever. And he will pull you up by your roots. Now, he's talking to the devil right there. Notice that. The Almighty God will strike you down forever and he will pull you up by your roots and drag you away into the darkness of death. This is where what he pulls up will go. It will die and never revisit you again. Come on, somebody. Are you with me? Praise God. That means to tell me, watch this. We, and I'm almost done here, guys. I know some of y'all are like, there's a, bunch of, there's a bunch of action going on everywhere. I don't know. So watch this. We have to make a decision in our soul, because this is where we make decisions at, mind, will, and emotions. We have to make a decision that we're going to allow God to root up what he didn't plant. We're going to have to make a decision and say, I am not going to listen to this guy anymore because he's going to want to do certain things. And we're like, I'm like, nope, I can't do that. You know, at the beginning, guys, it takes discipline to do this. You're going to have to make yourself get into the word. You're going to have to make yourself come to church. You're going to have to make yourself pray. You're going to have to make yourself fast. You have to make yourself until it becomes a part of you. Because in 1 Thessalonians, and I shared this with you out of the Transform message, it says, Paul said, I pray that your spirit and your soul and your body be blameless until the day Jesus Christ comes back. So you know what that tells me? That means that our spirit, our soul, and our body can be one. Because this flesh, and I know that for the transform message, I, I, I kind of picked on the flesh and said that anything that comes from this thing is just not good. But let me tell you this. There is a purpose for this flesh. And this flesh, watch this. If you allow your soul to team up with your spirit, your spirit and your soul will overpower this flesh and this flesh will submit. Paul called it, I buffet my body. Daily. Not buffet it. We want to buffet the body. But he says, I punch it. I take authority over it. I discipline it. I don't let it do what it wants to do. I don't let it eat 10 tortillas before I eat the dinner. 
Now, that can work in any way, Brother Lewis, right there. That whole thing about buffeting the body, that can go in so many directions right there, all right? So I'm talking about, anyway. But what I'm saying is this. It is time that we learn how to confront, conquer, and indicate what is it that's going on the inside of us that may have been planted a long time ago, and it's time for us to let God uproot it. Root it up so that we can understand what that really is. All right, so let me touch on some things. Perversion, procrastination, laziness, you know, always being late, uh, not, not making proper decisions, financial matters, uh, marital matters, spousal matters, children, all that, those, those are all things that have roots on the inside of us that may not be good. And it's time for God to start uprooting those things so that, what's this? Grass can grow. Let God pull the weeds out so that grass can grow. And now you can breathe better, you think better, and you're sharper. Why? Because now you're being led by the Spirit. And the Spirit doesn't have a hard time trying to get to you to tell you what you need to be doing. Very easy. Now you hear the voice of God, and it's like, praise God, that's it. I, I, know, I already know what I need to do. Now watch this. Practice doing it. Let me give you a quick, practical way of doing this. A practical way of doing this. Watch this. Don't say yes immediately to everybody that wants you to do something. Just because you're a Christian, you feel that you're supposed to do everything a yes, yes, yes for everybody. But that's, that's not how you do it. Here's, here's how you do it. If they ask you, let's just say they said, hey, would you co-sign for me on my car because my credit's not that good? Okay. Don't just say, yeah, I'll do it for you here, brother. Here. No, 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 no. Their, their credit's not good for a reason. Okay? And if you, if you go co-sign for them, that's, eventually, it's going to mess up your credit because they don't have very good uh, behavior and paying on time. So that affects that. What's going to affect you, too? Watch this. Here's what you need to do. Is say, you know what? Let, let me think about that. Give me a couple of days. Well, you know, you know, they're probably going to get mad and get all offended. Oh, I guess you don't want to. But, but you, you, that may be a good idea because then they won't mess with your body anymore, right? But here's the deal. Let, listen, take time to consult God about making that decision. Especially when it deals with something major in your life, like marriage. How many of y'all consulted God before you got married? No, one person. Amen. The rest of us, we, we, we just trapped, Pastor. We're we good. We, we got to work this thing out. All right, all right, good. We have to let the Lord now do his thing. What I'm saying is, those are important things in your life, man. How many of y'all consulted God when he came to this church? Some of y'all say, well, God led me here. Cool, because your church home is of uh, importance in your life. Your pastor, what pastor you have in your life is an important thing in your life. What house you move into is important in your life. It's a, it's, I mean, you're looking at a $150,000 house. That's a, big, you're, that's a big commitment. Are you ready for that for the next 15 to 30 years? First, consult God. Now, watch this. There was one year, several years back, I had, I had uh, I, you know, I gave away my furniture in the house. All, all the furniture I had, I gave it away. Because there was a person who needed furniture for their new house. Don't get any ideas, guys. All right, I, ain't gonna, I ain't giving it away now. Some of y'all are like, can I have your furniture, Pastor? No, no, no. Hold on. I, I consulted the Lord first, though. They needed furniture, and I was like, you know what, Lord? Let, and I felt something on the inside. I said, yeah, give it to them. So I gave him all my living room furniture, couch, love seat, recliner, ottoman, todo. Take it. I even helped him load it up. Praise the Lord. Happy time. Hey, praise the Lord. Now I ain't got no furniture in my house, but I'm good. So like, say a week later, we went to the furniture store. And you know, um, you know, when you go to, if you have a good salesman, 
that guy's going to want to sell you the most expensive furniture in the furniture store. I'm like, wait, I don't want that. I want this one. He's like, oh, no, no, you want this one. I don't want that one. I want this. And they'll be like, no, man, because blah, 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 blah. And so that's because they're a good salesman, right? And if you don't watch out, you end up going home with a $3,000 set of furniture you didn't want to go home with, right? Because that's just they do. So this is what happened to me. They were trying to get, and I was like, no, we're going to end up taking this one. And, and then next thing you know, you're like, you know what? They, they pull up, draw some paper, but, and all you got to do is sign here, and you can take it. I'm like, wait, hold up. Hold up. Here's what I told them. I said, do you have a little room in the back somewhere? And they were like, yeah, why? I was like, well, I, I need to pray. Like some of y'all be like, what do you need to pray for furniture for? Because that was a big investment, man. That was a big investment. Now, I was going to get myself committed to a couple of years, right? So I said, I'm going to step into this little room. I'll be right back. I went into that room. And I said, Lord, do you want me to get this furniture? I mean, you told me to give away my other furniture. So now I, I think it's your obligation to put furniture back in my house. So do you want me to get this? Is that? So I just kind of listened. And then I felt the Lord say, don't get it. I'm going to take care of you. I said, that's all I needed to know. I walked back out that door. They were like, are you going to go ahead and sign? I said, nope. I said, we're not going to take it right now. I was real nice. I was kind, though, to him. I said, no, we're not going to take it right now. Uh, but just hold on to it because we may come back, you know, later on to get that. I said, but we're not going to take it today. Oh, okay, well, we'll have it here. Okay, that's fine. On the way home, driving home, pull up to the house, to my house. There is a truck parked in front of my house full of furniture. And I was like, what in the world is that? I mean, listen, man, from the furniture store to my house in that same day, and I listened to the Lord, I would have bought that furniture. And so I would pull up and I said, hey, guys, what are y'all doing? They're like, what's this? The Lord told us to give you our furniture. I was like, what? Yeah, so here you go, Pastor. Take it. And they started unloading it and putting it in the house several years ago. Isn't that amazing? Why? Because we, see, listen, you get to practice this. Consult the Lord. Practice getting into the spirit. Don't just go by what the flesh wants to do. Go and be led by the spirit because he knows how to take care of even furniture for your house. Come on, somebody. Amen. And listen, the reason I'm sharing this is not to boast on me. It's to let you know that if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. Praise God. And it doesn't matter what it is. It could be furniture. It could be a mascara if you want it. It could be makeup if you want it. It could be whatever, a car, a house. It doesn't matter what. If you want your loved ones to get saved, he'll do that. But watch this. It's kind of hard to hear God speak to you when there's too many weeds. You got to let him pluck those out. Are you with me? And, and, and next step. And. Be careful on the seed that you allow into your ground. Because let me, let me leave you with this. Proverbs 18, 21. She, they don't have it back there, but let me share it with you. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. All right. Watch this. Most of the time they preach that to you. Like, hey, we better watch it because whatever you speak, you know, you're going to get it. Which is true. You will. But here's what I'm going to tell it to you. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. It's a seed. Be careful what other people are sowing into you because that's life or death. Those are two seeds, the seed of life or the seed of death. And if watch this. They speak that. It goes on to say, and he who loves it or he who hangs out with them or he who is always around them or he who is always taking heed to that, it says they will eat the fruit thereof. Whoa, you just received more seed that you probably didn't need into your life if it's death. But if it's life, praise God, you can receive it. I receive that. Thank you so much. But you don't have to receive everything people are saying to you. You don't have to receive it. And you don't have to let that seed be planted into your life. So it begins to start growing like a tree. Now, I'm going to tell you guys, we're going to continue to keep on going on this thing. It's going to be super good. I want you to come back Wednesday night if you can. Come back Sunday, next Sunday morning, all right? Because we're going to continue on this root thing, and we're going to get deeper. It's going to get deeper in this thing, and we're going to figure and find out how and why certain things are happening in our lives that deals with the root. That guy's good this morning? Did y'all receive that in the house? Come on, somebody. Stand on our feet. Let's give God a praise in the house. 
Amen. Those that are watching out there, God bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching with us this morning. I truly believe that this is, uh, this is just the beginning. God's got some amazing, incredible things that's going to change our lives and transform us even more. Come on, lift your hands to heaven this morning. Father, I ask that in this house, if there is any one person who does not know you as Jesus, as Lord, I ask that right now there will be a conviction in their heart and that they would receive you as their personal Lord and Savior. Now I'm going to ask that every one of us in this room pray together. We're going to ask Jesus to come into our lives, to come into our hearts. And he's going to be able to now root up those things that may have been hindering you or stopping you or holding you down. Come on, everybody repeat after me. Say, and those that are watching by Facebook, I say this with me. Father God, this morning... I ask that you would come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Transform me and change me. Holy Spirit, I receive you into my life. Make me new. I now thank you that from this day forward, I walk as a believer, as a new creation. In Christ Jesus, Lord, I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. Change me forever. Let me never go back to that old lifestyle again. I ask these things in the powerful name of Jesus, the great I am. Amen and amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hello family, thank you so much for your giving. Here are a couple ways that you can give. You can mail in your offering to P.O. Box 686, Snyder, Texas 79550. Or you can text your offering to 325-400-2829. These are a few secure and safe ways to give. We thank you so much and we treasure your offering and we call it blessed in Jesus' name.